Greetings and happy day to all of you. I recently posted a video about my scrap with Scrapper. Uh, it was actually an individual who I had met through a through Bartaria, actually. My age-ish, I never really liked the sound of his voice on his BitChute channel. But because I, I didn't have a male in my life, I was willing to tolerate a conversation, especially with somebody who may have had in alignment with me onto what my values were are and to perhaps network and learn a few things when it came to my attention that he had other motivations when he actually seriously invited me to live with him contingent on my fulfilling his requirements which are funny and I won't go into them but the fact that that he like so many men I have experienced in my life didn't ask me what my wants, wishes, and desires were, but instead dedicated, dictated to me what theirs were, shows me that this particular man, and, and perhaps a, a large majority of American men, um, want their needs met like little boys uh, with their mommies and aren't considering the female. Now, this is complicated by the fact that we have this third wave from feminism, and I'm not a feminist, in fact, I um, raised two kids. I was a stay-at-home mom. I was very resourceful. I um, saved money, bought secondhand clothes, didn't buy them, all kinds of things, and um, was criticized by my uh, then-husband who wanted me to work. And then when I divorced him, the second one at first wanted me to be a mother, and yet he increasingly insisted I keep making money, and every year I should be making more and more. So... We have interesting demands made on um, the partners. I have experienced men who have insurmountable demands that they place on me while not fulfilling any. And my background, as most of you know who watch my channel, is I have survived and I am thriving from post-traumatic stress and narcissistic abuse at the hands of my mother and my father codependently. Then on to every single uh, garden variety narc the overt and then the covert, vulnerable narc. And now I can spot them. And there's zero tolerance now. There's zero tolerance when my life lived by myself is at a high level of enjoyment. And so if a man t takes away from that, then he doesn't deserve to be in your life. And so it's interesting to me that there is this sort of high expectations of me but the man did not want to deliver. So um, that last scrap that I did was really kind of funny. It's online. It's my last video. And I will probably laugh more about it and do some editing. But um, there is a bifurcation of people in that there are is a splitting off in the, in the, on this earth plane of individuals based on who they are as an individual. Now, this is my opinion, obviously. So what is bifurcation? Is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? Well, um, let's just call it a healthy competition, but let's also consider it a non-competition competition. It's a letting go. So a tree loses limbs and those dead limbs are no longer necessary for the health of the tree. And then in the winter time, after the leaves fall, uh, then the growth goes into the roots. So when a person lives in a home, in, in an area, in a community, and they put down roots, those roots get stronger and stronger every year. Now I spent 10 years from 2010 until 2021 constantly pulling out my roots so I could satisfy that dick fuck in um, Virginia. Ooh, pardon my uh, vulgarity, but bleh, that's what it was. And I also had messed up brains and brain damage, if you will, from my narcissistic abuse uh, channel programming and uh, my uh, trauma bond. It's get, getting yourself clear of a narcissistic abusive um, relationship is akin to breaking a heroin addict addiction okay so I am a magnificent 
superhero. And I know that for a fact. All right. So I'm on this dating app and I'm going to meet this guy. And we decided we we're going to meet at um, the farmer's market. We're going to meet at, at 1030 in the morning. But at 10 o'clock, I know I'm not going to be there at 1030. So I said, let's do 1045 more like. Now, I know where he lives because the app lets you know where a person's location is. And it is in real time. So he is 10, 15 minutes from there. I'm 20, 25 minutes from there, from where we live respectively. And so I was at the bank and I look at the time and I go, oh, geez, I might not get there until 1115. So I said, after I had updated it to 1045, I said 11. And then I thought, oh, I might be later than that. And um, I go, I, I'm not sure. Now what this guy does, and it's not even 11.15 yet. It's not even 11. I'm at a stoplight. Okay. The original time was to meet at 10.30 in the morning. I contact him. I say 10.45. I realize I'm running behind. I say 11. And then I, I go, oops, another communication. And I go, it could be 11.15. Now, he immediately writes back, let's just make it another day. He could go on the app. He could see how many miles I am away easily. So obviously he's not that intelligent. Then I say, what, you can't wait five minutes? I don't hear from him. I send him a photo of myself. It's 10.55 a.m. I have arrived. He's gone. So he didn't even wait until 11. He left. We probably just met, missed each other, which is a good thing because there's so few guys that look like they're halfway decent on this app. And again, I'm really using it as a vetting process for my own tolerance level. And I've discovered I've tolerated quite a bit. I'm a 0.0005%. No, there's nobody like me at all. And I know this for a fact. I do not wear makeup. I, I am not high maintenance. I uh, gave birth naturally twice with no drugs. I didn't wear this on my face. I didn't get one of those things on my arm. I have probably no business dating normal humans. And there is probably a, a high likelihood that I won't ever meet a partner. And I'm, I'm down with that because I'm happier without one having a relationship with myself than to actually slow myself down and compromise myself for a partner. So I have zero tolerance for any toxic behavior. Now, a, a person might be like, well, you're the one that was late. Yes, I underestimated, I overestimated, whoops. So anyway, I send him a note and I'm like, we must have just missed each other, it's 10.55. Now I'm going to Bolton Bread, and I told him prior, I'm going to go to the farmer's market, and after the farmer's market, I'm going to go to Bolton Bread. And that way, if there's any chance that something happens, he knows I'm going to go to Bolton Bread. He knows I'll be there. So what happens is I get a message after I went to my third stop, which was to the Publix grocery store. So I went to... Um, the farmer's market at 10.55. We were going to meet at 10.45. Oops. I had said possibly 11. I get there at 10.45. I had said maybe 11.15 and that's when he split. And I sent him a picture uh, as I was leaving at 11.05. So I went to that one stand, got my things. He knew where to meet me. So I go and... Uh, go, huh, I'm thinking about this. And I'm like, well, I'll just unmatch him as soon as I get home. And uh, no, I don't need to offer any explanations whatsoever. He just isn't a good match. His pictures always look pathetic. He looked like a skinny little runt. And he had that look in his eye of desperation, vulnerability, poor, wounded, kicked dog. The way my first husband looked. 
and the way the third um, narcissist uh, was initially vulnerable, like, oh, take me home, feed me. So what happened was I was like, huh, okay, well, he didn't wait. What would I have done? I would have waited. I was communicating with this guy. I was telling him I'm going to be late. And then he's like, well, let's just make it another time. I was like, huh, he's not going to wait. And I said, can't you wait five more minutes? I'm just up at the light at Centennial Campus. He knew where I was. He could look on the app. But again, he's showing his intelligence level. So I uh, went and um, went to the grocery store after the bolted bread and then made myself a sandwich, thought about it. And then I, I, I told him, you know, I communicated to you. I mistakenly gave you an error in judgment. I thought 1115, but I got every green light. I've done this route before. And it's possible that I would have been there at 1115. I was there at 1055. I was out in there by 11, the original uh, corrected time, which was between 1045 and 11. You know, 15 minutes is a grace period, I told him. I go, this has showed me a couple of things about you. One of them is that you lack zero um, tolerance for somebody who has made a mistake. Now that is something that I don't do. An hour is one thing. Three hours is another thing. 15 minutes is a completely different thing. I have tolerance for that, especially if someone's communicating with me. So this led me to this conclusion. And I asked him, well, maybe you felt triggered. Is that it? I, I'm asking. It, it, do you feel like I don't value you because I don't value your time? Now, his lack of communication was like the biggie in his, in his, in his black and white thinking, which is you're not here exactly at uh, 1045. I'm, I'm gone. That's black and white thinking. That's a narcissistic thinking. So I show up. He's not there. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Great way to weed them out. And uh, again, I'm not looking for a partner who I have to, to uh, slow my life down for or a partner whose ego I have to make sure is still maintained. I did that. I did my time at the office. I did plenty of time at the orifice, if you know what I mean. So... So I just basically decided I'm going to speak my mind, give him the opportunity to feel good about himself. He can do one of two things. He can write back and say, I messed up. I was a little impatient. I, I was triggered. I thought, geez, you know, here's another woman who I have uh, carved some time out of my day. Um, he had to do farmer sh market shopping. I had to do farmer market shopping. Just how much of a sacrifice is that? Did he invite me to cafe afterwards? Did he say, hey, after you finish shopping, why don't you uh, go ahead and meet me at the bolted bed, like you said? Did he do any of that? No. So he's failing, 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 failing all the tests a woman would, would give. He's not a man. He's a broken boy in a man's body, in my observation. So I tell him, you know, I underestimated, overestimated my time. I got there. You were gone. It's showing me you, 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 you are very impatient and that uh, I communicated with you clearly. Um, and, and yet you only just said to me, make it another time without offering an alternative. So you're showing me your character. And I also said that thing about, did it trigger you? Did it somehow make you feel worthless? Did, did it trigger feelings of worthlessness? So what does he do? What, exactly what I expected. Within seconds, I'm I'm like, he disappears on the screen. Because this particular app, if the person unmatches you, you immediately, um, they disappear and the conversation does too. <laughs> so, so I'm like, huh, I hope he feels better about himself. You know, he was new on there. It's like, good luck, dude. Good luck. I know my value. I know I'm priceless. And I know that 
A man that's got lots and lots of money is not the guy that's going to be my next partner. Any more than a, a guy that is like a survivalist that lives off the, off the land. It is a relationship that is going to be based on commonalities of purpose and of mutual respect, communication abilities, and enjoyment of life. Uh, being able to uh, be clear. Now, what happened to Scrapper when I, I, you know, finished with this last guy on on this virtual? You're actually learning about yourself virtually. It's really kind of funny, and um, it's it's whatever it is. He 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 gets the last word in. Now, this is a man who all the compliments I paid him. All the things I said positively on uh, our communication, he goes straight for the negative. He didn't go, geez, thanks, you're right. It was really good for my son to finally let me back into his life after I was an asshole prick drunkard for two years. And uh, he let me be around my grandson. He finally trusted me to be around his grandson. He didn't say any of that. Uh, he, he instead is like um, calling me a narcissist. And suggesting all women are um, brain dead and narcissistic. That we should wear heels if we're going to be in his life uh, four times a year with a pretty dress. That we should work in the kitchen for 20 hours while he does the rest. As long as we're also taking care of the cleaning of it. <laughs> it's like every single day I'm single. I thank my lucky stars I got away from all of those men who don't appreciate, who are basically broken boys in men's bodies. So the, the, the clearer and the more healed I become, the, the more I look at this as the right of my life. And it really is. It's not just putting the line in the sand. It's setting it in stone. And not the Georgia Guidestones either. Your own tablets. Not the kind Moses brought down from his experience with the burning bush. <laughs> this is like the experience that you have as a spiritually evolving individual. A spirit having a, a earth experience. Learning about the physicality of the divinity here. That I can clearly stay, say to the farmer's market guy. Uh, you don't communicate well. You, and you lack patience. And clearly uh, that there's something that you're not addressing here. So, and I said to him, it's showing me your character. And he showed me his character again. By immediately disappearing into the disappearing act. Now there is a time to do that. There is a time to do the door slam. Not a problem. I don't feel insulted. Did I want a second chance with that guy? No. Not after he completely 100% abruptly decided to abort the, the get together because I was five minutes late. No. After I kept telling him that I communicated, I communicated that I was behind schedule. Did he use any of his male intuition? No, because he probably has no intuition. Yeah, he looked like a, he still lived, lived in, his, in his mother's basement. And he, I finally saw he, he changed his profile pictures and he was painfully skinny, painfully skinny. And he had that look on his face of like, the adoption uh, puppy that that looks at you with those mournful eyes that wants you to take wants you to take him home and feed him. I mean, I got to stop feeling sorry for these guys. No, there's no more second chances. I get to be what I really am. I get to actually go. I'm the cream of the crop. I really am. I'm interested in an egalitarian relationship with a man who's a man, not with a boy. Not with a boy. And uh, because I matured. I'm growing up. I've become the adult. And adults that want to hang out with kids. So then the Beataria guy, the scrappy, scrapper, 
It's like I then did the door slam there. I looked at the last thing he said to me, and I was like, he goes, you lost me at therapist, which was when I said to him, what I've been through from my, my post-narcissistic abuse, this is a partner um, angry at me every single day, husband number one, angry at me every single day for being happy, and he couldn't be happy, angered at me that I got to stay home with the kids while he had to work. I had a three-year-old and a two-year-old. I had nursed the last one for 18 months and the first one for 15 months. And they were 17 and a half months apart. He never once said, thank you for raising my beautiful children. He was angry at me for asking him for the reliable car because we broke down in the intersection and we had to get pushed off to the side of the road by a good Samaritan. He was angry at me for that. Angry at me every day. Angry coming home from work because his life sucked. I couldn't be around that anymore. Husband number two, cold shoulder treatment. He had sex with the computer, meaning he jacked off to it. Too stupid to erase his history. I had to tell him, hey, I know what you're into, fisting and blacks on blondes. Let me show you where the C-A-C-H-E is and how to empty it. Because huh? I, I would have kept it up, only I had kids that were using the computer too. And they saw what it was, and they were like, <gasps> and I was like, oh, kid, so sorry. Your um, stepdad is into some funky things, you know. It's uh, not healthy in my book. But, yeah, he wouldn't have sex with me for two months after we got married, just so he could show control. Gave me the cold shoulder treatment. Disregarded me. Didn't listen to me. And it was like, all right, only so much. And that last one, I would not marry. Raped. Um several times he would barge down the door on me uh he fucked the neighbor across the street he fucked the bartender he threw all my items in the air um just a number of incidences that i'm lucky that i'm alive okay so i've been through all of this uh, why it was the trauma bond it was me trying to get love from the impossible and the unlovable the human being who was angry at you for loving them because how you must be there must be something wrong with you for loving them. A narcissist is sick in the head. And so it's wonderful for me to be comfortable in my own skin, to love who I am, and to recognize behavior that I see as intolerable, and to be so comfortable with who I am and so confident that my life is unfolding and I am being directed by my a creator by my life itself because I am plugged in. There's more to my uh, being and only a human being who values themselves could possibly value me.